Hi everyone, David here, and in this video I want to show you guys how I use reference tracks to improve my mixes and how my mixes, my ear, and my compositions have actually improved with this one technique that I do and use all the time. So let's just jump right in. Move myself out of the way here. And let's go. So I already have loaded in here a reference track. Actually, this was a reference track that somebody had sent me uh, for a job that I did a while back, probably a few years back. And anyways, I still had it, so I loaded it in. This is kind of this is what it sounds like. Okay. And now what I do with that, and actually I use a reference track right at the beginning before I even write down any notes or anything, right? Some people I know will not like what I'm about to say, but I, I, for me, I've, I've always found it useful. So while most people use it at the end, I've been using my reference track at the beginning to get the tone and the sound of a track that I'm looking to get. Because usually what I do is when I work, people will send in a reference track because they want a certain sound to their video game or whatever project they're working on, right? They want it to sound a certain way, have a certain energy, uh, whatever it may be. So I use the reference track to basically model and to extract those elements and to put them into my own track. So what I do is I'll go and I'll, uh, and I'll start finding similar sounds that I can then use for my own track. So that's what I've kind of done here and I want to kind of go through it with you guys so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So the first thing I did and where I usually start is I start with uh, percussion. So that's what I did here. I just did one element, which is the clap. So I kind of loaded battery here and I kind of went through pretty quickly and I found this clap here that I thought was pretty cl close. So let's listen to it. And this is the clap I got. It's not exactly the same, obviously, but it's, that's pretty close. So what I normally do is I'll play the music and then I'll play along with it just to, until I can get a sound that's as close as possible to it. Right, so almost all three of these I could probably use interchangeably and they're pretty close and they have a kind of a similar sound. I could tweak it a bit, add a bit more reverb to kind of match the sound of the track, but I don't want to match the sound of the track exactly because I want it to be my own track, right? So I just it's just to get a very similar sound to what's in the track right there. And I think that's pretty close and I could use that if I'm trying to aim to get a similar kind of percussion sound as, as this track. Next thing I did was I, I listened, usually what the next thing I do is I listen to the bass. So that's what I did here. Let's see what I got. So can I hear it? it sounds like this. It's not exactly the same again, but it's something that's similar that I could use for my own track. Okay, so that's what was one sound. I thought it was close, but not close enough. So I went to this sound. Let's hear what this one is like. Again, not exactly the same, but something that's similar, has a similar kind of growl or grit to it. That's what I was looking for. And again, so I would kind of go through this and through, go through each element that I'm trying to match or model and find similar sounds in my own arsenal of sounds that I have. So the, the normally the steps that I take are usually I'll, I'll start with, uh, like I said, percussion, any kind of percussive instruments, and then I'll move to the bass or the melody. It just depends on the track and what's more uh, dominant. Uh, and then I'll go to the other. So if I'm going melody first, then I'll do the bass. And if I do the bass first, then I'll do the melody. And that basically has the three basic elements of any track, right? You'll have the percussion, the rhythm, and then you have the bass and then the melody. And then, uh, so I, once I have those three kind of set in stone, I kind of have, have an idea of what it's gonna sound like, what I want, then I'll go and find the harmonies and the extra sound effects and extra sounds and filler sounds and things that I want in the track. And yeah, so the cool thing about uh, doing it this way is that you you never you always have a starting point basically right you're never starting from scratch even if you have no idea what you're going to do where are you going to start what are you going to write you know you, you have a starting point you have an idea that you can go off of and model right you're not copying it obviously <laughs> i wouldn't advise anybody to do that unless you're trying to do like a certain version or cover of a song which is this is great that's a great way to learn how to uh, learn music learn theory that's a great way to do it but and this way, you kind of model what's there. And you also get that extra benefit of if you were going to do a cover, which is 
you still have to you still get to analyze the track that you're using as your reference. You're analyzing it. You're uh, understanding the theory, what's happening musically. You know, you see, you still have that that uh, bonus and advantage if you're doing this, and. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, so, and this is something that everyone can do and everyone can kind of start doing in the composition, especially if they're just starting out. And uh, if you're just starting out in composition, that's this is a great way to learn very quickly. You're learning from other people who have good rep reputable tracks and uh, that sound great, right? So that you can put that into your own project. You get to balance the sounds like and then match it to the track. So you hear how loud the bass is, and then you hear how loud the melody is compared to the bass, and how loud the percussion is to everything else. Where is where are the instruments pan, right? So it's a really great way to learn and apply it to your own personal music. So you're not copying it. You're, you're still doing your own track, but you're kind of modeling and taking that same. Uh, tonal quality of the, of your reference track, and that's basically it, guys. This is how I do it at pretty much every time. Whenever I'm trying to uh, uh, create a track, whether uh, whether it's from scratch, whether I'm working on a project or something, I'll, I'll almost always have a reference track there to get me going, to get me started, so that I can keep my ear sharp and my mixes really uh, well focused. And just a um, extra tip or uh, thing to be aware of is whenever you're doing this make sure that you're routing um, the track into a clean out audio like you don't want you don't, don't want to have any effects on it obviously because then you're gonna gonna mess up the, your reference track so make sure it's going to clean stereo out and uh, what I normally do like here I showed how I actually just imported it here into the uh, main in my main DAW. But what you can actually do is, uh, what I normally do is actually I, I use like Ozone 8, which has a feature here where you can do that, where you can load in a reference track. Uh, it slices it up as well, and then you can bypass it. It's very easy to do. That's normally what I do. But again, if you don't have that Ozone 8, which is totally fine, then you just put it up here or somewhere in your project to... Uh, look over and yeah i think that's basically it for this video guys if you like this tip if you like <laughs> if you like what i had shared please leave a thumbs up if you're new please consider subscribing um also if you guys haven't done it yet check out uh, in the description i've been opening up my email list and i'm offering a free sound pack for all the new subscribers and i'm also uh offering a free limited time bonus for uh, a free lesson in coaching for me for all my new subscribers uh, obviously this won't go on forever actually at the time that I'm recording this it's it's available but I'm probably gonna be shutting it down around the hundred subscriber mark or so um, so yeah so check the link if it's still up and it still says it's available then it is and if it's not then I'm sorry guys um, it's a lot of my time to do that but I really uh, appreciate the people who are signing up and, and supporting me in that way so uh, check the list for that and uh, I think that's it that's it for now so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video